Hello, this is a quick overview of Quicken 2016, especially for those who've never used Quicken before. This is how you get started. So when you first open up Quicken, you'll see this screen, and it just takes a few minutes to get it all set up. It even shows you over here about 10 minutes, about 5 minutes, and then another 5 minutes to complete these steps. So first we need to see where your money goes. You just click Get Started and then you type in the name of your financial institution wherever you have your checking account. Uh, we'll just do an advanced setup to create a, a fake one. We'll just say my bank and we will say I want to enter my transactions manually. Now if you were if you were doing this with a real bank you could go back here and put in your bank name Bank of America for example type in your username and password and click connect and it would all be set up for you but for purposes of this demonstration we'll do a manual bank a manual account just to demonstrate so we'll do a checking account for personal transactions starting date let's just go with November 1st and let's say we have two thousand dollars in our account so that's how you would set up a checking account. Done. Uh, this is your uh, Quicken Cloud account. That'll pop up to sync up your transactions with Quicken. Um, you can just say no. So there we go. We're done setting up an, an, our first account. Now we'll go on to set up bills. We can add a bill here. Uh, who's our biller? Let's just say Comcast Cable, for example. We know this is a regular bill. It's due on the 15th of each month, and it's 65 bucks. We want it to come out of our checking account. We can even add a category. Uh, what is it? A utility? Well, not a business utility. Let's go to personal expenses bills and utilities internet okay easy enough done now this is a new feature of Quicken 2016 which allows us to link up our bills with the online billers website so for example I could link to Comcast and Quicken will automatically figure out when my bills are due with Comcast how much I owe and allow me to pay those from right within Quicken you would just click link it now, click on Comcast, and type in your username and password for Comcast, and Quicken will take over from there. I'll cancel that because this is just a demonstration. Um, but as we see, here's that bill that I just set up, due on the 15th of November to Comcast. And it's red because I'm already past the due date, so that bill's overdue. Okay. Now we're finished setting up bills. If you have more bills, you can enter those there. And finally, the third step, we want to set up a budget so we can start planning out where we're spending our money. So we'll just call it My First Budget. Done. Now, as you start to add your and track your spending in Quicken, it will start to populate this with how much you've spent for the month in each of the different categories. If you would like to add categories, you can do that manually here. Let's say each month I know I have an auto payment. I have fuel. I need to pay for internet, mobile phone, utilities. Uh, what other expenses? Uh, just go through, click any expenses that you know you're going to want to track each month. Groceries, fast food, there we go. Charity, my monthly gym membership, uh, kids activities, haircuts, laundry, there we go. Clothing, simple. Click OK. Those will all show up right here. 
and Quicken will tell you how much you've spent that much in each category. Very simple. So with that, we've just gotten started with Quicken. Now if we go to the Home tab, we can see how much we've spent in the last 30 days, how much we have left in our account. And you notice when I set this account up, I started with $2,000. Well, right now it's showing I have $1,935 left. That's because it automatically took into account that Comcast bill that I set up for $65 that was due on the 15th. The spending tab here will show us what we spent in the last 30 days and it will show us our account register where all that spending was happening. We can change this to see what we spent in the last 90 days, for example, or this year. We can look at just our checking accounts. We can look at a single account. We can look at savings accounts. We can really break it down to see what's going on here. We can click on the Bills tab and see all the bills that are due this month. I like to use the list view instead, but you can see there's that bill that I set up right there due within the next 14 days or I can look at the bills due within the next 30 or 90 days. Very easy to keep track of all your bills. And projected balances lets me know for the next 12 months or let's say the next 30 days how much money will I have left in my account based on my spending habits. The planning tab this shows us our budgets that are set up we can set up a debt reduction plan. Let's say we owe $3,000 in credit card bills. We can set up a plan here to get us out of debt. We just tell it we set up the credit card or the debt account and click next, next, next and we'll be through it. The lifetime planner. This helps you figure out when you can retire, how much money you're saving what you need to do to retire by a certain age. You can put in different assumptions. You go through this little wizard and tell it about you, about yourself, your age, your family members and their ages, what your salary is, um, any other income, things like that. And it will help you plan out your financial future. The tax center will let you see what you're paying in taxes this year what you'll owe or whether you'll get a refund, what you can do to get better, uh, get a better refund or to reduce your tax burden. And you can look at your savings goals. You can set those up to save up for vacation or college or a new car. And then if you happen to get the Quicken Home and Business version, you'll have a business tab here that will show you your profits and losses you can use the business tools to set up and create invoices, uh, track your miles, and several other tools helpful for small business owners. And normally there will also be a financial uh, investments tab here, but I haven't set up any investment accounts yet, so that doesn't show up. So let's go ahead and set that up now. So let's say we want to add a brokerage account. And we'll just, for the sake of this demonstration, do a manual account. We'll call it My Stocks Personal Transactions. Let's say we started this account on the first also, and it has $3,000 in it. There we go. And then we would enter in just to get, since I'm doing this manually, it's prompting us to enter in what uh, stocks we have in this account. And if you set it up to automatically pull from your brokerage, it will do this for you. But let's just say I have a little bit of Apple stock. Okay. There we go. It'll figure out what Apple's worth today. Let's say I have 10 shares of Apple. it will automatically figure out how much that stock is worth there. So now we can see there's the investing tab right here. We can see that I have Apple stock. This is the current price, 10 shares, so that's worth that much money. 
and that gives me with my cash balance a total value in my my stocks account of four, just over four thousand dollars and then there's the portfolio x-ray that will scan through your stocks and oops didn't click there there we go it will scan through all your holdings and let you know uh, what your weak points are what your strengths are and give you some advice on managing your investments and if you look at performance here you can see how well you've done over the last time period whichever you choose 30 days 12 months over the year uh, and you can compare that with the S&P 500 for example and since I just set this up it hasn't downloaded it so we'll download the price history for the S&P 500 there we go and now we can see how my performance has been over the last 12 months against the S&P 500 and then the allocations here lets you know how are you allocated what types of stocks do you have what types of bonds do you have how are your investments uh, allocated and you can even set up a target so that you can um, you can have a goal for how you want to allocate your investments so that's that's pretty much it that's how you get started with Quicken if you've never used it before uh, one last very nice feature right down here is your credit score and if you click view here it will prompt you for some information and from then on Quicken will track your credit score so you'll be able to look down there and always know what your credit score is which is a, kind of an important metric on your financial health so that's good and it also gives you alerts on your credit report so if anyone tries to to uh, to steal your identity or open accounts in your name you'll you'll get alerts from Quicken so you can prevent that so once again Quicken pretty good tool for tracking your finances um, probably the, the the most comprehensive package out there for personal finance uh, so there we go thanks for watching have a nice day